Alright, so this is our one-on-one -on -one interview with uh, head coach of the Stallions, uh, Cooksey, and uh, me, I'll be asking him a set of questions, and I hope you uh, people enjoy. So, I guess my first question is, like, how was it coaching your first game? Um, nervous. I think I might have uh, got sick three times before the game. Nerves. Yeah. Nerves all day. At work. On the phone, talking football, I just nerves, nerves, nerves. But it's good to get it in, get it out of the way, and now it's back to regular time. Yeah, I can, I, I can, I don't know if I can, I'm too, it's too soon for me to become a coach, but like, what made you become, want to become a coach? Um, so I was a general, I played for the North Shore General from 2007. Like 2013, maybe? 2014. Okay. Um, at the end of the year, I had way too many injuries. You know, I pulled both my groins twice. AC joint sprayed on my shoulder, and I had a PCL tear. So playing was out of the question. But I loved the organization. I had a lot of great friends on there. And I was always interested in getting into coaching. So when I asked the owner and the head coach if I could jump on the coaching staff, they definitely said okay, and they asked in what capacity. And that's when I went on my first year as a linebacker. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. Now, how long did you do that for? I was a linebacker coach for one season. And then, and then, did you change teams? They like did you get promoted? Nope. I uh, then I moved to defense coordinator. I was defense coordinator for the 2016 season, and we had the number one defense in the league. We lost in the semifinals. We went eight and two. Wow. And then 2017, I was a defense coordinator, and then 2018, I was the offense coordinator for half the season and defense coordinator the second half. What, was it like hard to like try to manage both offense and defensive styles at the same no, time? No, no, I didn't, I didn't call both at the same time. I was just the o OC for four games, and then I moved back over to the defense because the defense was struggling for the last six games. And, the, and then like, how, how did you and uh, Co uh, Coach Y and they come about about doing Stallions? Well, I know Coach Y since 2007. He was my head coach. Oh, I did not. I did not know that. Yeah, Coach Y was my head coach. Uh, he was my head coach in 2004 when we went to the Super Bowl, which we lost at that same field. at that exact same field that we just lost at. I played there twice, and I'm 0 and 2. And both games were not pretty. But I hate that game for everyone. Yeah. Um. And then at one point, Coach Y, he came back to the. He was he was the head coach for the Rampage. And then he came back to the Generals in a minimum capacity role. You know, he was off and on off the field with personal things, and he was our DB coach for special teams. And then he, when he left the Generals, he ended up with the Admirals of the ECFL, the Southern New England Admirals. And, you know, they contacted me about when the Generals seized operation. Well, when the Generals... Lost to the Super Bowl in 2019, before the pandemic, you know, 2020. Um, he got me to go over to the Admirals as a defense coordinator. So I was originally supposed to be there, even right now. But then the greater Boston Stallions came about. They reached out to Coach Y to help them build the organization. And they said, hey, we need a head coach. And the first person that popped into his mind was me. I, I could never do I could, I, I, I just can't imagine like were you happy excited or like or did you feel like you weren't the right person for the job at the I moment? was no I was both I was happy and a little disappointed because I knew what we had with the Admirals. They are probably gonna win the championship this year in the ECFL. I left the championship team without knowing what I was getting into. So of course there was nerves about I know when I got over here, but I really want to be a head coach. And it's a first year organization, so I can kind of make it my own. All right, I'll roll the dice and go. Yeah, I pro I, I'm a risk taker. I probably wouldn't have done the same exact thing. Yeah. And then that's where you met Anthony? Yes. Oh, AC? Yeah. Uh, yeah, AC was actually the um, him and his board of directors were the ones that interviewed me. Coach White just introduced me to them, and then we set up the interview to go over everything. And then, you know, there was a couple of things that I said in order for me to be the head coach. 
these are the terms I'm only willing to do it on. And we have both agreed on terms. And and the terms have mostly been met. Okay. That, that, good. Um, I guess and my next question would be, um, are you still calling the plays, or is that more or less the coordinators, they get to do whatever they want, or do you have, like, certain, like, authority about that? So... BK is a young offense coordinator. Um, he was only an offense coordinator for like one season. Um, so one of the things that we did was, you know, I am 100% in the calls designing the play call sheet. Now, are there times where I play, call the plays? Yeah. Um, I don't like to step on their toes too much, but I'm a dictator with a fake democracy. <laughs> Meaning, I you know, it seems like we're all cohesive and we'll vote on stuff, but at the end of the day, the team's going to run the way I want it right. If they agree with the way I want to do it, then that's cool. If they have opinions about it, I'm more than willing to listen. If they convince me and sell me on it, then I can convert. But if I'm stuck on, no, that's wrong, this is right, there's no, there's no convincing me. But as far as play call, I don't call no defensive plays. Okay. Um, I did call some offensive plays on Saturday, uh, mainly, mostly that drive where we scored. Uh, me at school, we were doing it all. We were in sync. And all the other game, the rest of the game, I just there and here. But you know, the Wildcat game might be a little different. Okay. Yeah, I can't. I can't wait for that. It being our first real home game after yes. that whole freaking Baco week one. I know. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Did we, oh, yeah. Did we ever actually get any of those players that said they wanted to come with us, or did they all go into the machine? Uh, we sent them all to the main machine. Okay. Because you th- we didn't want them to drive all the way down here. No, honestly, they were good players. Um, it would have been hard for them to find playing time on our team. So instead of having them waste their time every Wednesday to come down to us, we knew there was a better opportunity for them to play more. If they just stayed at home. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I heard. Well, one of the six players that wanted to come play for us now the owner of the main machine? Because that's, no. that's what I heard from uh, from somebody. No. Okay. Unless it's a female, no. Okay. Jesus. Um, all right, so uh, next question would be, is, uh, what do you, is, since, though we haven't yet to get the game film, do you know anything co- about our upcoming foe? Well, I do have game film from from 2019. So I do know a little bit about them. They're a spread team, but their running back, number seven, is their primary weapon. Is he like a catch in the back? He, he'll, the catch, he'll catch and run. He also does their punts and their kick returns. Jesus, he's like a... He's, like he's a, Ladalian Thomas as an athlete. You know, he's, he's doing it all for them. I mean, they have a good quarterback at Tim Bushy. He's a good quarterback. He's actually... Um, He's actually got coached by Coach Watt. Oh, boy. So, and uh, I actually played a couple of games with him when I was a player. And, and uh, bowl games. And he's a good quarterback. He's not bad. He has a decent arm. He's pretty mobile, and he has a decent IQ. So, but number seven is their bread and butter. butter. That's their running back, bread and butter. He's not uh, fast, but he's, he knows how to run. He has great vision, and he's not afraid to lower the shoulder. Now, how's their defense looking? Their defense, um, from what I remember about them, is they have a pretty good defense. You know, uh, they know how to stop the pass pretty good. Uh, Their run defense is, you know, not bad. But, once again, if we have everybody show up, everybody. Yes, everybody is is a big thing. Yes. I mean, one of the biggest things in semi-pro, what a lot of people don't know, is you can have a 60-man roster, which we do have. But it's all about travel. You can yeah, get everybody. I definitely learned fast about that. You can get like we still have like we have forty guys, about 35, 40 guys at the away game, which was more than what the home team had. The home team had only like twenty three players. I thought they only had nineteen. I thought I heard. Well, but yeah, like nineteen between nineteen and twenty five. We have double the amount of their players, but they had the right nineteen players. Quality over quantity. Oh yeah, I think that. You know so. That's what it is, a semi-pro. I mean, we'll have, we got a home game against Worcester, which 
We expect everybody there. Nobody said they wouldn't be there. Everybody's back from their vacation. We had about three players that were on vacation. So if everybody shows up, it should be a great game. Um, I guess another another question uh, from the Blitz and Bears game is: did, Were you trying to like maybe spread it out after the run game really wasn't working early on? They made it a great adjustment because when we went to pro, two back set us out of pounds in it. They were playing like man coverage, cover one over the top, yeah, yeah, yeah. and we were doing the play out, you know, running into play action, hitting Garrett, deep, taking the shots. They made a great adjustment. They made two great adjustments. One, uh, well, they knew it was a, well, they knew we were going to pass. They dropped more in the coverage, and when they knew we were running, they were sending the house. So they made a great adjustment. They were sending, let me see, seven, six, seven guys, almost every play. And then when it was passing situations, they didn't send guys. They dropped them all back in the coverage because we only had two receivers and a tight end out there. And our own line, um, you know, we kept the running backs in the backfield to help with the old line blocking. Yeah, because they kind of needed that a little bit. Um, I mean, once again, the old line did a great job. Um, I think Fusion came when they started blitzing. Yeah, I, that's I, all I it was. It, that's just coaching and getting him up to speed. I guess so. So, like with Garrett, did you feel like he had a like a like that's a that's the side I want to go. Like, that's a favorable matchup that we would like to exploit. Oh, Garrett's good. Um, he definitely was. I mean, he had height over the kid. He was just as fast as the kid. But, you know, Lee, the other receiver, number 11, I mean, he was a mismatch also. You know, there was a couple of times where, you know, the quarterback held the ball a little too long and the guys were open, but he might have got a little happy feet. Um, there was a couple missed play calls by myself, a couple missed play calls by Coach BK. I mean, honestly, it's a group effort to win. It was a group effort to lose. And then with the, the quarterback changeup, did you feel like you, you wanted to take him out because you didn't want to be no, hurt? No, he got, he got hurt. Oh, yeah, that's... He got yeah. hurt, and the trainer did not clear him to come back. Oh. Yes, he hurt his throwing shoulder. So if you hurt your throwing shoulder and you're a quarterback... That's the last thing you wanted. Like, yeah, tear. I mean, he wanted to keep going, but I just we just told him that's what the trainer said. EMT, then you're not playing tonight. I, uh, just a uh, few more questions. Yeah. Yeah. Can, uh, you want me to put the light on? Uh, do you want? Yeah, I can put the light on. All right. You still right, Ted? I guess I, I touched on this pre, uh, in post game, like there was a feud with the defense. The, number seven and number, I think, was it five? Yep. Yeah, seven and five. Did, did you guys try to make adjustments for those two players, like double patina them or like put, put zone around them? What well, they were trying to do is um, grab some wide receivers. Is the amount of receivers we never played against all year? We were short DBs, so when we saw our DBs struggle a little bit in the coverages. Their speed, you know, Coach Zay wants to make an adjustment, grab some wide receivers at head speed, throw them out there, put them in man coverage, and blitz. Uh, but, you know, the wide receivers, you have to play DB all year. It's a different type of game trying to play corner and uh, safety and try to go into man coverage. Yeah, not everyone can be Troy Brown. No. So that was Coach Zay trying to make an adjustment just to try to match up our athletes. First, they're athletes. But the number one thing that was forgotten was he could be an athlete, but if he doesn't know how to play that position, it doesn't have the right technique and can't break his hips and read the read their hips to see if they're breaking. It's recipe for disaster. Yeah, they, they have like five touchdowns. I know, I know number five had three, and the other guy must have taken it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but hopefully with the us getting all of our DBs ever, because I know no. no, and once again, this team, the Western Mass Blitz of Bears, they've been playing together for years. Their quarterback is one of the best quarterbacks in the league. And he's even more dangerous when he won't 
gets out of the pocket and runs around. And goes old school on you. Because he can improvise. And he knows his receivers. He knows how they're going to break their routes and where they're going to go. So when you play an improvised quarterback that's good at it, it makes your defensive scheme that much harder. Yeah, it's like Randall Cunningham. Just throw the, throw the, the fucking game plan out the window. Yep. And, I, and just and not it's hard to make it up at the fly. No. Especially, as, as we've said before, we were missing players. How, how did you did you guys try to make it maybe adjustments for like goal line stuff? Because if yeah, we were in the five man front. You know, there's no adjustments to be made. We got a five man front, and basically it's either overpower us or overpower you. And that's more for the run. But once again, they were going against either through the ball nine times. So I think they only ran the ball three or four times. Like eight, it felt more more like ten because that guy had a lot of carries in the second half. More than the first. I think he had like two in the first half or three, and then the rest all came in the second half. He was trying to run it down that goddamn throat, but he had guesses. And I didn't like how they tried to run the score on us. I knew that was going to happen. I looked, I looked right at the guys and said, if he gets a chance to score, he's going to keep on doing it. You got to remember, one of the biggest things in the league, one of the tiebreakers is oh, yeah, points. points against first playoff teams. So you got to run the score on you have to in this I, can, I, can. I mean, have you ever saw the TV show Last Chance You? And EMCC, the first thing they did it with, was running up the scores. Because that's how the time record is going to be. And imagine there's going to be a lot more fights coming in here if, they just beat, if, if we try or they try to do that on us. No, no, I mean, we, you know, as you can see, stuff gets heated. But you say stuff. But once the whistle was blown, you see everybody goes into the middle of the field, everybody's talking. They know how to separate it. Uh, good. Yeah. Yeah. Me coming from me being a hockey player, I mean, if guys try to like run up the score on us in hockey, drop gloves time, we all going to try to kill each other. Yeah. That's how it usually came to a lot. So, it's it's weird for me to see people who try to run the score up on you take it. Football, I mean, when I was with the Generals, I don't know how many times we We beat one team seven in the we ran it up. And they still shook hands? Yeah. Wow. Football. You know? Because if they have the chance to score 70, they're going to do it. I guess um, last, last question is, are you guys going to try to maybe change a little bit up with the off- uh, offense a little bit? I don't want to like, get into any specifics. Um, I think you know, we'll probably go a little bit more run heavy. But outside of that, I don't really think personnel adjustments don't need to be made. Okay. Uh, but maybe play call and strategy. That's about it. So, uh, sorry everybody, but it's starting to rain. Yeah. I, I got to end this. Yep. So I hope you enjoyed. Uh, see you guys. Uh, we'll, I'll be back with him next week.